In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll take you through the process of hand washing and blocking wool sweaters, as well as give you tips on storage and moth prevention. At each step, I'll offer multiple options for how you can get the process done. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, you can tap or mouse over the video playback area of your screen to reveal the chapter titles and starting points of each section. What I need in order to wash and block a sweater is some sort of receptacle that can hold enough water as well as hold the sweater. Now, if you have something large enough that can contain more than one sweater, um, then you can wash multiple sweaters together. If something's very light colored and something's dark and you're worried about bleeding, I would wash them separately. So I used to use my top loading washing machine. I would fill it with water, turn it off, and then I could put three sweaters in there and let them soak for a while. And then I could just turn it to the spin cycle. No water is being added. It was just draining the water out, forcing the sweaters to go to the sides of the cylinder in order to drain the water out. It was beautiful. It was if you have a washing machine like that, I would encourage you to use that to, to hand wash sweaters. So I mostly knit with wool and I have a lot of wool sweaters. So uh, I have products that are specifically geared for washing wool, but you really don't have to do that, especially if you don't have very many wool things or this is the first time you're, you're trying to wash something that's wool, you probably have something in your house that will work just fine. And that something is shampoo. Some people feel that baby shampoo is, would be better because it's marketed as gentle. What makes it gentle is that the pH is the same as water and so it matches the tears. But this is actually better for your hair and it's therefore better for wool. So, so this is perfectly fine if that's all you have. I often use Eucalan. It's, it's a no rinse wool wash. Put a capful in with the sweater and then when I'm done soaking it for however long I want to, I just drain the water out. I don't need to rinse it. In most cases, when I'm washing and blocking a sweater, it's, I just finished it. It's not really that dirty and this is just perfectly fine. Or I might just need to wash and block because it's gotten out of shape and I, I'm not really worried about dirt, I'm just worried about shaping it. So this is perfectly fine. So these kinds of products that are designed for wools typically have ingredients that help wool, like they restore some of the lanolin that may have gotten lost from washing. So this is a product from a company called Unicorn, and they have uh, actually three different products depending on what it is that you're trying to wash, like what stage the wool is in. So Power Scour is aimed at really degreasing. So if you're trying to wash uh, raw fleece, then you could use this, or if you have wool diaper covers for a baby with cloth diapers, you might need to use this uh, to wash them. But for sweaters, uh, probably fiber wash is the more appropriate thing to, the, to use. It will still get out some grease and dirt and things like that, and it will prevent the dirt from re-adhering. It does need to be rinsed. Uh, and then they have fiber rinse, which does not, so that would be the final step. So this would be like shampooing your hair, rinsing it, and then adding a, a, a no rinse conditioner. That's what these products are. So it kind of depends on what you're looking for, how fussy you want to be. Um, but again, shampoo and a rinse would work just fine. So one of the things that people worry about when their sweaters are wet is them stretching out. If you're worried about that, then you can fold your sweater before you put it in the, wa in the wash water. I got this tip from Suzanne Bryan when we were doing a live stream last, last fall. She said she does this, which I thought was interesting. So if you are really worried about your, your, your sweater stretching out, um, you could do this. I don't typically do this, but I'm going to do it today. So I put a capful of the fiber wash. I folded up my sweater. I'm going to put my folded sweater in the water. I'm going to push it down. Wool likes to hold on to air. So it can take a long time for wool to release all of the air. And you want to do that when you wash. You see how it's floating up to the top? 
So I'm going to leave it here to soak for at least half an hour. If it were really dirty, like if it was actually had some stains or dirt I was worried about, I could leave it longer. I could even leave it overnight. So I'm going to leave this for half an hour uh, and then I will do the rinse. So if I were using the ukulele, all I would need to do is squeeze this and then drain the water out. If I use the shampoo, I would need to rinse it. And since I use the fiber wash, I also need to rinse it. So what I have is a second container of water here. This is like a kitty litter box thing. There's two two of these uh, trays that hold the water and then there's one that's like a, a, a drainer. And so I can move um, this from this container over into the rinse water. If I want to use this fiber rinse, I can refill this with clean water with a cap full of this as a final step. So it really depends on if you want one step, two steps, or if you don't mind three steps. Put a cap full of the fiber rinse in this water and this just needs to stay in this water for a few minutes. So this is the time when we need to completely drain it and get as much moisture out of the sweater as we can. So what I'm going to do is take this to a sink where I can squeeze it more efficiently. Okay, at this point, I have squeezed as much as I can out by hand. You don't want to wring a sweater out, and this is still pretty heavy with water. This is the beauty of a top loader <laughs> machine where you can spin it out, it really gets the water out. Um, but in this case, I can't do that, so I'm gonna need towels to help me for the next part. I wanna lift the sweater up. I don't want to pull the sweater up. That's going to cause it to stretch. So I wanna put my hands underneath the sweater to lift it up and then put it on the towel. At this point, it's, it's still so wet. I don't want to try to pull it in, into shape at all. I'm wanting to extract as much water as I can. So I'm gonna fold this up. I'm gonna roll this up I'm going to put it on the floor and I'm going to stomp on it, um, pressing as hard as I can with my full body weight to get as much water out as I can. And then I will get a fresh towel and do that again. I am not pulling this out of shape. I'm keeping this as much together um, as I can while I do this. So I, again, I don't want to pull this out of shape in any way. Once again, I'm going to roll this up and get out as much water as I can by stepping on it. Once you have as much water as you can get reasonably get out of your sweater, you need to block it. And what that means is that you need to basically pat it into the correct shape and the correct dimensions. You're not stretching it, you're not, you don't have to pin it. Blocking just means shaping something while it's wet. And so you need a surface to do that on and you have a lot of options depending on what is available to you. So one option is to lay it flat on a towel. That's going to absorb some of the moisture from the towel, but it's gonna be trapped underneath the sweater. So if you're in a very humid climate, that may not be the best option for you. Uh, another choice would be just to lay it flat on a table. You wanna make sure it's something that can handle having a wet item laid on it. This is going to not absorb water, so it's gonna uh, facilitate evaporation a little bit more. And again, you're gonna to have to use a measuring tape to make sure that you have all of the measurements of the sweater um, correct. A third option are blocking pads like this. They're like little puzzle pieces that you can put together into the shape that you need. The ones I have have kind of a fabric surface to them and have friction on them. And I like them for some situations but not all situations but you can get these so that they have a more slick surface and that they have one inch grid marks so you can build yourself a grid and you can use that to help you get your measurements correct what I use is this quilters uh, pressing pad it's meant to fit on a, 
on a cutting table for quilters. And so it, it's 20 inches wide and I think it's 60 inches long. So it's very large. Um, for purposes of a sweater, I only need it a half of it. So I often will just fold it in half. Uh, and this has half inch grid marks. And so I really like that because that helps me um, get things uh, set up correctly. I checked my pattern to see what the dimensions, the finished measurements of the sweater were. I looked at the schematic for my size and saw what the dimensions were. So the bottom hem, that bottom of the, my sweater is supposed to be 20 inches across, which is the entire width of this grid here. And then from the bottom to the underarm, 15 and three quarters. And then for the entire length, it's about 23 and three quarters, 24 inches, something like that. So that gives me some guidelines of where to line up particular parts. So I have my sweater here. Um, I've got most of the water out. It's still very damp and it'd be very easy to stretch it out of place. And I don't want to do that. Anytime I move this, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to push it together and lift from underneath to move it, to, to get it into the, the position that I want. I'm not going to lift it up and pull it out because that's just going to encourage it to stretch. So what I'm going to do is kind of flop it into position and check the measurements, make sure everything is laying flat. So my bottom here has to go from, from one edge to the other of the grid, but this doesn't quite look lined up right here. I wanna get this centered on the 10 inch mark there. And I know at the underarm, which is at 15 and three quarters inches, right where the underarm is, is 15 and three quarters. So I want to line up my underarm there so I can get the dimensions again correct. And so this is supposed to be a little bit narrower up around the bust than down by the hips. And so I want to make sure that, that I'm not stretching this all the way to the edge. And I can keep kind of doing this a little bit to encourage it to go into the center more if I, if I need or want it to. And there's the underarm. I'm gonna check the full length. It should be just under 24 inches. I'm looking at where the, the shoulder seams are. And if, I've, if it's bunched up at the top, then I wanna smooth this underneath. So the idea is that you just wanna smooth it out and get it in, pat it into the shape that it's supposed to be. For my uh, sleeve shaping, I want to make sure that I have the shaping lines are all along this fold so it's not twisted. And if I'm worried about the length of the sleeves, I could measure those as well. Because this is uh, slightly absorbent, uh, I will be blowing a fan on it until I go to bed this evening. I'll check it. Um, and I, then I may turn it over. Um, but there's one other type of, of system that you can use to help dry sweaters, and that is a sweater drying rack. This allows air to circulate. It's, a, it's about four inches up off the ground. You can see that mine is stained. I need to move the, take this off and wash it and get rid of those marks. I don't wanna put another sweater on here in case this dye ends up transferring onto the sweater. So until I get this cleaned off, I won't be using this to uh, dry any sweaters, but this is another possibility. And this is especially good if you have a pretty sturdy sweater that you know is not going to easily pull out of shape. After you've taken as much moisture out, just lay it on this instead. Once you have washed and blocked your sweater, in order to store it, fold it up and let it lay flat so that it is in a relaxed state when you're not wearing it. It's really not a good idea to hang sweaters in, from a hanger. That will allow gravity to uh, pull it out of shape and it will also create a shoulder marks as well. So you've gone to all this work to make a sweater, to wash it, to block it, to put it into shape. Allow it to stay in shape by laying it flat for storage. Now the next thing that people are worried about is how to prevent moths from damaging their sweater. And I've never ever had a problem with moths and I've never done anything intentionally to prevent moths from attacking my sweaters. But many people have had this issue 
and many people worry about it. So I'm going to give you some tips for how you can prevent moths from ruining your sweaters. Uh, the first thing is that moths prefer dirty wool to clean wool. So cleaning your sweaters before you store them away for the season is the best first step. And we've taken care of that. The next thing to know is that the adult moths are not eating your sweater. They're looking for a place to lay their eggs and it's the babies, it's the little larvae, the caterpillars that when they hatch are looking for food to eat. What can be helpful is preventing adult moths from even going at your sweater. So if you can find airtight containers, like truly airtight containers that they can't squeeze into, that would be a good place uh, to start. But that may not be possible. You might have to store them in a drawer on a shelf somewhere. And in that case, you want to use something that's a moth repellent that, that makes it uh, unattractive for a moth to come in and lay their eggs. And one way to do that is to store sachets in with your uh, wool clothing. Lavender buds is one good uh, ingredient for the sachets, or you could use rice that has lavender essential oil on it. Lavender has a compound in it that acts as a moth repellent, and I'll link to some scientific studies down in the description that explain uh, why that works or what's going on. Rosemary, uh, has the same compound in it, but it doesn't seem to be as effective as lavender. But if there's some reason you can't or don't want to use lavender, you could use rosemary or rosemary essential oil instead. Either one of those acts as a natural moth repellent. In this video, I presented options for washing, blocking, and storing your wool sweaters. In knitting, there are always multiple ways to get to the same endpoint, and that is no exception when it comes to washing and blocking your wool sweaters. While there are many specialized tools and products to help you with these tasks, you can get the job done with equipment and supplies you already have at home. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.